Mark McMillan, welcome back to Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I hope you're doing well. Oh, I'm doing good, man. I definitely appreciate you guys having me on. No doubt, and I appreciate you coming on for a couple of minutes, but uh, looking forward to having you back in the great state of Alabama. And, uh, you know, we've got a busy week here of spring football, but uh, certainly we want to get squeeze you on and talk about uh, some things that you're involved in. Tell us about the uh, All-American Combine coming up this week at Stanhope Elmore. Oh, like you mentioned, man, I'm, I'm just excited, man, to be able to come back uh, to, a, to a state, man, that, that gave me a platform and, and took me in and, uh, being able to come back with John Copeland, Antonio Langham, uh, Roosevelt Patterson to be there as well. Uh, we're trying to get Prince Wimbley, Jay Barker. I'm trying to get him, but you know he's big time now. So trying to trying to get him to come down and and, and work work the camp at Stanhope. Uh, Coach Bradford has done a, a good job of uh, you know with his program and opened his doors up for us to come down there and give kids from across the state of Alabama opportunity to come out and and learn from uh, some of the guys that played the game at the highest level as well as get timed and. Hopefully, uh, a college scout to uh, see these times as posted on the website and uh, give these guys an the opportunity to get a scholarship. Let me talk about your job there because obviously, you're a college, uh, former college player, excelled at the high level, went on to the National Football League, and had a chance to play there eight years in, in several different organizations. Talk about uh, what you guys are able to do there, Blue Gray. Uh, football.com and talk about how you can connect uh, kids with, as you said, scholarships and future opportunities. Um, you know, we test the guys almost like an NFL setting uh, in the 40, the broad jump, uh, the bench press, uh, the three cone shuttle. Uh, then we take them through our individual drills where I'll be with the defensive backs. Uh, John Copeland will be with the defensive lineman. You have Roosevelt Patterson who plays in the league that will be with the offensive lineman. And we'll just go through a 30 minute individual period and teaching these guys the techniques that was taught to us. And then we'll go to one-on-ones and uh, see who can really compete in seven-on-seven as well. And at the end of the combine, we evaluate these kids and uh, post up their information on the website. So when a college recruiter asks about a kid, they can go on the website and see his times and, and see how he performed. Man, I'd just give Roosevelt Patterson a mic and just let him talk, man. I mean, oh, we do man, it often here Rosie's on this. Big something else, man. Big Rosie special. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's awesome to feature on the show, man. I mean, I could – I can hand him a mic, man. He can keep the crowd going for minutes and hours <laughs> right here on the program. Yeah, he's, he's good, but I, I know the linemen that probably never heard or never learned from him, he's always a treat, man. He's, he's, he used to think he was a defensive back when we played anyway. He always think he, he was a tight end, but uh, he was he was a really good, uh, good athletic guard. You know, could have played tackle as well. So, I, I, you know, I'm – I'm uh, excited to see Big Rosie out there uh, working his magic as well. Stan Hope Elmore, it's about an hour and 45 minutes away from Tuscaloosa if you drive the speed limit. If you're able to get a little bit faster on 82 or 65, you might be able to make it in less time. But the southern part of our listening area, uh, probably less than an hour, uh, going to be happening 11 o'clock this coming Saturday. Uh, Mark, let me go back here just a couple of minutes. Uh, and I want to go back from a defensive back who played at Alabama in the NFL Walk us through that final play that Alabama won that national title on from a defensive back. What did that guy do wrong that allowed Devontae Smith to get past him and Tua Tonga Bailoa to connect with him? Um, I, they just relaxed. Um, I, you know, I think, you know, second and what was like 26, and I think, you know, they were thinking like, you know, they're going to just throw something short and uh, we'll just come up and make the play. And obviously, with uh, you know, with Tua being the quarterback as a freshman, you wouldn't think he would try to go up top. Uh, you know, uh, on that play, and, you know, kind of shocked me as well. So uh, I don't know what the defensive back was thinking. I'm sure he can't wait for the season to start because uh, I'm sure everybody's still walking around uh, Athens, Georgia, looking at him like he's crazy. But uh, that was an unbelievable play, man. I'm sure everybody in Alabama was probably holding their breath. And when that ball launched up, man, I said there's no way that they're going to allow this guy to just run by him, and then it happened. It's like it, that's that's the, that's the unthinkable thing as a defensive back, man. That's the worst feeling ever. Uh, seeing a guy catch a touchdown pass on you, let alone for the national title. So, Mark, help me understand what is – okay, because you said relax. I, is it something you're supposed to be following his eyes? Did he look that safety off? Got kind of – I mean, what what happened that he allowed that guy to be open? I mean, obviously, Devontae Smith made a great call at the line of scrimmage, but talk about what you're supposed to do there. How do you correct that and not let that happen? Uh, well, the safety should have got off the hash mark, first of all. I don't know what he was doing. Uh, standing on the hash, I didn't think. Uh, I don't think he thought uh, Tua can get the ball out there uh, that fast. And then the defensive back, he didn't get a jam on the guy. So that whole that was just a whole breakdown in the in the secondary on that on that right side. And uh, for the safety to stay on the hash that long, 
uh, you know, underestimating the speed of the wideout was was a was a huge mistake, and uh, you know it cost him the ball game, cost him a national championship, and uh, and made to a, a, a hero. Probably had, never had to buy another slab of Dream Lamb Dream Lamb ribs in his life. There's no doubt about it. Uh, no doubt with. Uh, look at what he was able to accomplish. Uh, Mark, can, will you take us through your reaction? I mean, what what did you do? Did the neighbors uh, hear Mark McMillan going crazy out in Arizona? I was actually in uh, Jacksonville, Florida with Eric Curry. And uh, we're, at, we're at a sports bar. And we're, you know, the first half, we're like, man, you know, we might we, you know, we might need to consume a couple of uh, uh, adult beverages. You know, this is getting out of hand. And uh, the second half, you know, just uh, just kind of worked out for us and, uh, once the ball went up, man, you know, you, you would thought that uh, Eric Curry won another national championship. He was so happy, man. So we were excited, man, and, uh, to see the program continue to get better, uh, to see the support of the fans and seeing these young men get an opportunity uh, to play at the next level is great. And you got these guys are only freshmen. So we got at least two more years uh, of seeing these guys, and uh, hopefully we can keep it longer. But, you know, Alabama is almost like a basketball school, man. These guys are three and done. <laughs> hey, Mark, what is it about Nick Saban from your perspective? You've been around some big-time coaches. Why is he so successful five out of the last nine years? What's he doing? Um, I think he just stays in the moment. Um, you know, he doesn't let the outside things uh, bother him. Uh, reminds me a lot about Coach Stallings. You know, Coach Stallings didn't work, let anything uh, from the outside bother us, no matter what was going on, how successful we were, or if we had a bad game or anything like that. Uh, he always kept us in the moment. Uh, play by play, every practice was was different. You know, we competed at a high level, um, so he just keeps an even keel, man, and he just keeps everybody on their toes, especially the reporters. Uh, you know, his press conferences are are, are, are classic. <laughs> <laughs> sure, no, no. I mean, trust me, it's uh, being it's not easy sitting on the other side of that chair and that <laughs> stare down uh, with Nick Say, but and sometimes I think he almost likes it's almost like a competitive edge that he takes in the press room, like. I'm going to get you. I'm going to get you. You better not ask a stupid question. If not, I'm going to embarrass you right here in front of the uh, God and everybody right here on this press conference. But uh, a lot of fun to be able to reflect. Uh, Mark, I want to go back here just for a couple of minutes. When you talk about draft, you were drafting the 10th round, the 272nd pick. Talk I'll about get that number. <laughs> and let, let me ask you, uh, because I'm not trying to bring up something that, I mean, you proved them wrong. But talk about the doubt that you heard leading up to the NFL draft and how you were able to overcome that. Um, like I said, I uh, started two years at Alabama, and you would think that will at least get uh, you know, a foot in the door. Uh, we had a great coaching staff. Coach Oliver was our defensive back coach. Uh, coach Gene Stallings, who you know, coached in the National Football League a long time. And, uh, you know, I got his approval every day. Um, he said, you know, every, every practice after every game, you know, he uh, gave me a vote of confidence that, you know, I can make it in a, on, the, on the next level. And uh, a story is that I had an agent, I don't want to say his name because he's probably still working in, in uh, Birmingham, but uh, he came into uh, Coach Stallman's office with me and said, I don't think he's going to get drafted, so we're going to start to reach out uh, to some Canadian Football League uh, teams. And uh, from that point on, I can't tell you what Coach Stallman said to the man, but he was only my agent for one year, so you can kind of figure that out. But just uh, from even the agent standpoint, man, just to the media, uh, to the to the whole NFL, all those teams that pass up over me, and uh, just making those guys pay for it. Uh, every every time I got an opportunity to play against a team that didn't draft me, uh, I took it personal uh, for the whole eight years. You know, so uh, it worked out for me. I used that uh, for my advantage. We're talking to Mark McMillan, former defensive back at the University of Alabama. Who gave you the nickname Mighty Mouse? Um. Uh, it started in Philadelphia, you know, okay. uh, first uh, Eric Allen and uh, Reggie White, they used to always call me Little Mac, and uh, then I went on to uh, Kansas City, and uh, Andre Risen was Spider-Man, Derek Thomas uh, was the Falcon, and everybody was like, man, we got to give you a nickname, and, you know, when I was wearing the red, the red jersey, somebody said Mighty Mouth, you know, and from there, man, it just took off, and uh, Kansas City was, was, was great, uh, obviously playing with Derek Thomas and uh, Andre Risen as well, and uh, the fan base that they had there in Kansas City took to it, and when you see a grown man walking through the stadium wearing a, a Mighty Mouse costume, that's that's pretty that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, and I had a chance to uh, catch up with Derek's son. I was in Kansas City a couple of months ago, and uh, man, I, I I looked at his son. He looks just like Derek. You're almost thinking you're having uh, lunch with Derek Thomas. We were able to connect, and uh, he showed me his gym and and all that. But I mean, you're sitting there looking at Deron, and he looks just like Derek. I mean, he is. 
identical to Derek Thomas. It, it's kind of funny how uh, close those guys are in, in resemblance. And he acts like Derek, too. He just, uh, <laughs> you know, so uh, I'll get the chance to see him, in a, I think, next month. Uh, for Derek Thomas' uh, golf tournament that's still going on in Kansas City, the third long foundation. So uh, still supporting my guy. I know he's not here on earth, but, uh, you know, he was, he was a good support system for me. He was one of the reasons why I wanted to go to Kansas City uh, to be able to play with him because I didn't get a chance to play with him at Alabama. So uh, anything I can continue to do to help uh, Derek and his foundation continue to raise money and help kids in the inner city of Kansas City, that's what I'm doing. What's your favorite Derek Thomas story? I, I can't tell them. Yeah, oh, I just, I okay. just, you know, okay. they're they're personal. You know, and, uh, the, the great thing about it, Derek asked me to be his uh, seatmate when we're, you know, on the weight games. Uh, Marty picked the uh, veteran players we wanted to sit in first class. Obviously, you know, Derek picked me to sit next to him. It was just, I guess, it was like a Bama thing. He knew whatever we shared, we weren't going to tell anybody, but besides other Alabama players, so uh, some of the stories I just can't, I just can't share some of those stories. There were there were some juicy ones. <laughs> All right, all right. So, so now we'll get a favorite story because we feature Coach Stallings every Wednesday at five o'clock. It's my most <laughs> challenging interview that I have all week long because I got to be on my A game. What's your favorite Coach Stallings story that you can st- uh, share on the program? Um, I, I was uh, the ones I always tell kids. Uh, it was before the Iron Bowl. I think it was my uh, my junior year. Uh, he had just suspended Danny Woodson before the Iron Bowl. That's when Jay Barker. Uh, first got his start, and uh, you know we're always supposed to wear a suit and tie everywhere we went inside the lot, you know, in, in the hotel, and uh, whether you get a snack or whatever you had to uh, have on your suit and tie. And I just happened to put on my shorts and t-shirts and go downstairs and get a snack. And I opened up the elevator, and there was Coach Stallings sitting right there. And uh, some of the stuff he said to me in the elevator with fan, uh, he didn't care who was in the elevator. So I quickly went upstairs and changed it to my suit and tie and uh, went down there and. Uh, got my ice cream uh, like I was supposed to, and you know, just knowing that uh, he can pull you out at any time. You know, I was, I think I was, I think I might have peed my pants. I was so scared. So, <laughs> you know, Coach Stone just have that way about him, man. He gives you that look, and then he's got that southern draw, and uh, he doesn't, he doesn't scream. You know, he just gets his point across, and uh, you know, from that point on, man, I was, I was, I was the Coach Stone's uh, protege. <laughs> I, I've never fumbled the football in a game. But something tells me having him on every Wednesday during the off season, uh, I can feel that stare, that look that he had where he didn't have to say anything. I can kind of feel that through the interview at times. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure, uh, like I said, man, he's he's still got the same punk, uh, you know, through all the health problems that he's been battling. Uh, you know, only a, only a strong man like him can come through. And uh, you know, all the players continue to reach out to him. He continue to reach out to the players. Uh, he still knows who everybody is. He can still tell you when you made a mistake in a game uh, 15, 20 years ago. And uh, like I said, he was probably one of the best coaches that I had, uh, that I always had my back 100%. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for his guidance and toolish and, and, and inspiring me to go out to, uh, to be the best, you know, I don't think I could have made it to the next level because uh, he was one of the guys that, that told me every day that I could make it to the National Football League. Mark McMillan, 29. Mark McMillan, 29. NFL veterans and Crimson Tide alumni going to be in Stanhope, Elmore, Alabama this coming weekend. That's a little bit north of Montgomery. If you've ever heard of the city Pine Level, uh, it's very close there. Stanhope, Elmore, certainly we talk about football. They're able to get the job done. April the 7th, that's this coming Saturday, and it's going to be 11 a.m., 11 a.m., uh, All-American Combine. Mark McMillan, you know they got a dreamland down in, in, in Montgomery too now. Oh, uh, you already know. You know, you know from the past shows that I've been on with you guys. You know, I got to get the ribs, I got to get the bread, and I got to dip it in the sauce. I got to get my dreamland thing. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, they've got a great one uh, down in uh, downtown, close to uh, the River Park. So, are any chance you're going to make it to Tuscaloosa? I mean, are any, any chance you can you can make it by? Or is it going to be quick in and out trip? Um, I'm going to try to make it by. I heard they have a practice on Saturday, so uh, I don't know what time it, it, it starts, but I, I want to try to come down there after the combine at least, uh, check out some of the guys. Um, you know, I know Savion. Savion's been uh, transferred from LSU. Uh, he's one of my guys, uh, the young maiden. Uh, he's another one of my defensive back guys from uh, from the Dallas, Texas area. So I just want to come down there and uh, support those young dudes. Hey, tell me about Savion Smith, man. I mean, you, you brought up the name. We're we're counting big things uh, for, <laughs> from Savion Smith. Yeah, I've been I've been uh, working with him since he was uh, before he went to IMG, and uh, you know been real close with him. Went on a couple recruit trips with him, and uh, he just you know he just wants to get it done, man. You know he just want to put 
the stuff that happened to him at LSU behind him. Um, you know, he's, he's stepping into a good position. Uh, he's long. He's lengthy. He, he's a competitor. Uh, he has everything that you're looking for in uh, in an Alabama defensive back. So I'm excited to see him uh, go out there and, and uh, put on a show for us. No doubt. Uh, Mark McMillan, 29. Connect with him on the Twitter account. Former Alabama alum at the University of Alabama. Going to be a part of the NFL Combine. Uh, college and uh, players trying to make that transition. If you've got a uh, son that is working his way through and would love to get some uh, opportunities there to move forward in his game, you can check it out at Mark McMillan, 29, and the NFL Combine. Uh, not the NFL Combine, I guess All-American Combine uh, this coming Saturday, 11 a.m., down at Stanhope Elmore. Mark, as always, thanks so much for uh, being a part of our show. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it, fellas. Roll Tide.